Good morning, YouTube family. It's Emily and Andrea here at VW Family Farm. We are inside in the kitchen today. Um, it's actually a Saturday here, and Ben actually had to work. He's had to work a lot, so we've had to hold down the fort here. So when he is working, we usually try to catch up on things that we can do without him. And so Emily and I are going to work in the kitchen probably all day. So in preparation for our new store, we've dug out all of the fruit juice that we have that we've had frozen and we're going to make jelly out of it today and I am going to cut up some onions that need to be processed. Yes. So we have got a lot to do. Let's show them what's behind us. We've got a sea of jars and the dishwasher is actually full of jars as well. Lots of jars ready to have jelly put in them, ready to be filled with all kinds of yummy goodness. So that is what we are working on. Jelly is one of the easiest things for a new canner to try their hand at. I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks throughout today. This is not necessarily a how-to because all types of jelly are going to require different amounts of sugar or whatever you're using to sweeten your jelly as well as um, sure gel or you can use what's called Pomona's pectin which is a different type. It's a newer thing that's not dependent on sugar like sure gel is so you can use alternative sweeteners with that. But all of that is going to vary depending on your recipe and those packages sure gel and Pomona's pectin come with the instructions of exactly what you need. But even with that, some people still struggle and think, I can't do it, my jelly is not going to set, so I'm going to be giving you some of my best tips and tricks to take the guesswork and make jelly making much easier for you guys. Are you ready to get started? Yes. <laughs> Let's get going. We're going to get some stuff put up for eating later on. Okay, so these are the onions. These have been sitting here since we harvested them early this summer. And they just really need to be something done with them before we get bugs or anything else in them or they start rotting. So I'm going to peel them first and then chop them up and then we're going to put them in Ziplocs and put them in the freezer. So we found about three rotten ones in these and if you have stored yours at like room temperature or in a root cellar or something, you probably want to go through, it's probably time to go check for rotten ones because if you don't, then it could spread and you could lose all of your onions. Look at this amazing, huge pan of rendered lard. I did that one day this week. It's a big ingredient in my uh, soap. So I've got that ready to go. You can actually store lard at room temperature. It's shelf stable. Uh, as long as you strain it really good and get all the bits of meat and stuff out, if you don't, it'll start to mold. But People have kept lard at room temperature for hundreds of years, so it's perfectly fine. Just, like I said, strain it good. Okay, so Emily is going to work on these. She's got her bucket of onions down here. She's all set up, ready to um, chop the ends off and clean them up. Then we've got another tub over here. We're going to keep all the peelings because we can feed those to animals or compost those down. We don't want to waste anything. And then she's just going to go ahead and put it in a freezer bag. Uh, we're not even washing. We will wash when we get them out to use them because I'm going to freeze these actually whole. Um, she said earlier she was going to dice them, but actually we're not. <laughs> we're not. We're going to freeze them whole. It's easier and less time consuming. And then when I take them out, I give them a little rinse and that actually helps soften them up and then I can chop them up however I'm wanting them chopped up for whatever I'm doing. Okay, so these are all bags of muscadine juice which is a type of grape. It is so delicious, but I had froze these in the past in four cup measurements. So I'm going to use some of these and get started. Now, I have this really big pot here that I use to can in. Um, I'm going to use it as stainless steel, and then I'm going to use this enamel pot as well. It's not quite as big. So my first tip is if you have a huge pot, you can safely double a recipe of jelly. Where you're going to run into trouble is if your pot is not as big as this and you try to double or triple your recipe or something like that, that you're not going to be able to get it to a full rolling bowl once you add all the sugar or whatever type of sweetener you're adding in depending on what type of sure gel you're using. Um, and that is essential. When you get to that step and it says full rolling bowl for one minute, it means full rolling bowl for a solid minute. In fact, when we get to that step, I'll, I'll tell you about it, but I usually go for even more than a minute. Um, so that's going to be essential 
is picking your pot and then deciding are you going with one recipe or more than one. All right, M is making progress. She's got her cute glasses on, not for fashion, but for why? So I don't cry. I seriously do have these on so I don't cry because my eyes are very sensitive to onions. All right, you're getting them done. It's smelling like fall in here. I know that's bright, but we have the window open. It feels good outside. We have got a major operation going on in here. This, I'm doing a triple batch. I would not recommend if you are a beginner doing a triple batch. It's just going to be a lot to handle. And there's no guarantee that it's going to set, but I'm doing my best. Uh, this one is ready to go. This is going to be a double batch. So it's already thawed out, good and heated up. And so I've added the two packages of Sure Gel that I'm going to put in there. And now we need to bring it to a full rolling bowl. And in the meantime, while you're getting that heated up, measure out your sugar so that when that gets to a bowl, you're ready to put the sugar in immediately. Okay, so we have got a full rolling bowl. We can add our sugar now. You need a bowl that can't be stirred down. So you can see that is still boiling, even though I'm stirring. We're gonna add the sugar. All right, now we are at the most critical step in making jelly. It doesn't matter what kind you're making. You can see I've got all the sugar stirred in. I've got my heat turned up, but you need to keep an eye on it at this point because when this starts to go, it is gonna erupt and if you aren't watching, even as deep as this pot is, and it's, it's like way down here, it will shoot up like a volcano and you will have a mess on your hands if you're not watching. But here's the key why a lot of people fail in jelly making. You absolutely cannot use a pot that is borderline too small. You can't be almost full. You have to have a lot of room for it to boil because it's gonna foam and billow and um, it will easily boil over on you. But even if you're watching and keeping it from boiling over, you have to have that hard boil for a full minute. So that's why I told you earlier, I usually even go like a little over a minute, closer to two minutes to ensure that I've went long enough because that is crucial for your jelly to set. So you can see what I mean about it's going to start erupting. I'm actually going to turn this down and quickly, um, if I have to, be ready to pull it off the heat a little bit. But turning it down seemed to slow it down some. So, And you can definitely stir it during these uh, minute or two that you're doing this. Definitely stir it and stir it down a little bit. It just should be a bowl that you can't stir and stop it. Okay, we got it boiled. And we're about to jar it up. And it will gel on you quick, so you better jar quickly. Okay, so we want to fill these up to within about a fourth inch of the top. You can get measuring tools to measure this, but... As you can, you will just kind of learn what that looks like. We want to go a little past the rim. All right, we are going to now wipe off our rims and uh, put our lid and ring on here. And then we're going to process these beauties for five minutes in a hot water bath canner. Uh, that is just to make them store longer, prevent mold growth, and all of that. So I'm going to get these wiped off. I'm not going to hot water bath at this very moment. I'm going to get some more jars done, and then I will do uh, more at a time. It's getting crazy in here. We've got jelly literally everywhere. Over here, I've got 24 pints in these two canners. These need to process for just about five minutes each. And so I'm gonna get some more going as soon as these are done. Next up, we were gifted a bunch of beautiful apples. So I'm gonna make apple butter. This could not be simpler. So uh, you don't even have to peel and core these. You are gonna have to have some sort of uh, food meal. Last time I mentioned it, I called it an old timey. We called it a ricer in my family or a strainer or food processor. I have since been informed it is called a, and I hope I'm saying this right, a chinoy. Um, so that that's what you'll need, something like that. This is an off-grid version, obviously. Just going to use a little elbow grease or you can get fancy and um, have a much more upgraded version than this, but something to run it through and uh, push the pulp through. So one reason we're not peeling and coring is we're just chunking these up is because there is a lot of pectin that's gonna thicken this apple butter up in the core and there's a ton of flavor in the peels and it's just not necessary and this is a whole lot easier. 
So I have chunked up, this is actually 16 pounds. I am going to link the recipe I'm using. It's actually for doing four pounds of apples. So um, for every four pounds of apples, now we're gonna add two cups of water. And one cup per four pounds of apples of apple cider vinegar. So I am going to get these up to a boil, not too high. I've got it on about medium right now uh, because I don't want them to stick in the bottom. I'm going to get it to a boil. I'm going to cover it and then I'm going to simmer it however long it takes to get everything soft. It says about 20 minutes. I think it's going to take longer because that is a huge, huge pot. And I didn't cut it in tiny little pieces either. Um, that would make a difference. So uh, just cook all this till it's good and soft. All right, so everything cooked up really beautifully and soft. I'm gonna run it through the strainer. So now apple butter is so easy. We're just gonna add the rest of the spices, a uh, little lemon juice, and our sweetener in at this point. So for those four pounds of apples you started with, you should wind up with about eight cups of puree. But at this point, if you wanna be exactly precise, you can measure it, and then for every cup of puree, add about half a cup of sugar or sweetener, whatever you're using. Um, like I said, it should turn out about eight cups, so at this point you would add in about four cups of sugar. Um, and I have quadrupled this. I'm making a huge batch, uh, but that is the recipe, is about four cups of sweetener, sugar, whatever you're using at this point. So for the normal size batch, you're gonna add about two teaspoons of cinnamon at this point, a half teaspoon of ground cloves, and a half teaspoon of allspice. And the last thing is, for every four pound bag of apples, we're gonna add the juice of one lemon. Now we're just gonna cook this for an hour or two, let it simmer, make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom, cause it will. Uh, give it a stir every once in a while to encourage it to evaporate and thicken up a little bit. And you are done. So that's my basic apple butter recipe. Turned out wonderful. I wound up cooking it for about an hour. And then it doesn't really change much on its looks, but I took a little salad plate, stuck it in the freezer, and a quick test you can do is put a little drop on that cold salad plate. If it just runs, it's not uh, cooked enough and thick enough yet, but if it kind of just sits there, which mine did, it is good to go. So I've jarred it up. I'm gonna hot water bath can this for about 10 minutes. Uh, we are less than 1,000 in altitude. If you're above, you probably better check your elevation because you have to add about five minutes um, for about every 1,000 feet you go up. So I'm being very careful. You can also lower them down here in here with a jar lifter just to not risk burning yourself. You can see as I'm putting them in there, the water's rising. I want it to for sure be over these jars by a little bit, um, by at least like an inch or so. If it doesn't rise and cover them, I'll add more water. So you can see these are completely submerged now. Um, that's fine, that's what you're looking for. It's just them all completely covered. I'm gonna put the lid on and time this for 10 minutes. It's already a rolling bowl so I can start timing. If your water's not that hot, you need to wait till it's a rolling bowl before you start your timer. All right, so I am wore out. I actually wound up doing 81 pints between the muscadine, the grape, and the apple butter. Uh, that is for us to eat throughout the winter, but it's also for our new farm store that is coming. Uh, we wanna have some things stocked to put in there. Next on my agenda is soap and lotion. I'll be making lots of that, more than I've ever undertook to make before. Uh, I'll be making that over the next month to go in there when we get it here and get it set up. So that's it, that's what we're up to. 
we always say go big or go home so this is just more of that i appreciate y'all watching so very much and your kind comments and just all the love you show us here on youtube as well as in our facebook group and everywhere we just appreciate you all very much we will see you guys tomorrow and god bless Oh, 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 oh,